Yeah, now speaking of surreal, uh, this uh, nicely segues into uh, the first film that we're going to talk about, uh, which you saw, uh, which was the new film by Guillermo del Toro, who was there, I understand. He was there indeed. So this was the first one of the week and my very first London Film Festival film ever was his new film The Shape of Water which was on the Tuesday night for the gala so it didn't have a Q&A but it did have an intro and he was in fact there um, with some of his crew so a producer and somebody else I believe um, but he got such an amazing reception and there was such excitement it's very difficult to um, get tickets for this um, so I was really grateful to be able to go um and yeah it was it was fantastic it's probably the best film one of the best films i've seen all year actually and it's not out until next year i believe yeah yeah so you get an exclusive uh so yeah you're very lucky i really wanted to watch this film but unfortunately you know because it's a hot ticket uh these things do go very quickly so you know you must know the right people obviously I was fortunate that a friend of mine did um, get a couple of tickets sort of last minute, so we went along to that. It was amazing. Yeah, and it's interesting when you say like uh, they do like a short Q&A before the film. Uh, this actually happened a few times, the films that I saw, where they say, well, we don't really have time to do a Q&A, so I'm just going to ask you a couple of questions now. Um, mm-hmm. So I guess that must have happened with Gilmo as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, tell us of the synopsis of Shape of Water. Okay, so, I mean, it's not strictly listed as horror, but we all know that Del Toro does do beautiful dark films incredibly well, and I would definitely say it does fit into that category. Anybody who's seen Pan's Labyrinth will know exactly what I'm talking about, and films such as The Devil's Backbone. Um, So this film is um, listed as adventure drama fantasy, and it definitely is a fantasy film. And the synopsis is... An other otherworldly fairy tale set against the backdrop of the Cold War era in America, circa 1962. In high security government labs where she works, lonely Elisa, um, who's played by Sally Hawkins, is trapped in a life of isolation. Her life has changed forever when her and her co- co-worker discover a secret classified experiment. So, um, yeah, I mean... In a nutshell, um, it's about this lady, as I say, played by Sally Hawkins, who's incredible in the film, who is mute. She comes across this secret experiment, um, which, I mean, like, like I say, we're not doing spoilers, but most people know that this is a creature, so I won't go more into it than that. Um, obviously, with the title of the film, there's a huge um, theme revolving around water, and that's where this creature predominantly is. Um, and it's it's an amazingly beautiful film with lots of references to the 50s and 60s as it is set in that era so I feel like Del Toro has kind of done this as a love letter to the things that he loves in that era so lots of references to 50s or early 60s films theatre, dance, um, like the silver screen black and white classic movies like little snippets all throughout that are just visually amazing and like fantastic references and um, decor clothing and vehicles which obviously for me is like a dream come true especially in like a dark film because those are some of my very favorite aesthetics it's poetic um it's got some twists in it as you would imagine um it's uh, obviously, I'm not going to spoil it, but it ends incredibly well. Um, it has emotion in it. It's dark. It's humorous. There's gore and violence. And I picked up on quite a lot of references of popular films um, that I will mention. That will sort of give you a bit of an idea of what maybe to expect. Um, so I was getting um, kind of hints of something along the idea of maybe Beauty and the Beast. Um, There's a bit of a love story. The aesthetics are quite um, sort of harking towards Amelie, if you're a fan of that. I am. Yes. So um, obviously when you see this, you can let me know if you think that that's the case. But I got a lot of that when I was watching this. And maybe something along the lines of um, Splash as well, with like the water 
and creatures and also something maybe classic a bit like um creature from the Bla uh the black lagoon okay so like a classic monster movie so yeah combine that all with kind of beauty and the beast fairy tale like qualities something magical a bit like splash amelie um for like a retro kind of whimsical fantasy like um reference and you can imagine sort of what this film is like okay yeah so that does sort of sound like the kind of films very similar more to pan's labyrinth then would you say in terms of the films that del toro has made um yes but think kind of more classic and i would say it feels like it's for it's like more mature than pan's labyrinth so it's still fairy tale like but definitely more mature like there's quite a lot of um sort of adult jokes in terms of sexual jokes so it doesn't feel quite as sort of um almost like it's aimed at sort of children in the way that um pan's labyrinth does feel a little bit like that pan's labyrinth <sighs> is really dark though i know it's too scary for kids but i do feel like pan's labyrinth is for a younger audience and the shape of water um it's been reported as one of his very best films which i do agree with i think it depends on your taste but i would definitely put it up there as one of his very best but i do feel like it's a bit more mature than pan's labyrinth just because there are some like sexual jokes um definitely i don't think a teenager would get this film whereas with pan's labyrinth a teenager probably would love that kind of thing <clears throat> okay yeah, so, I mean, for me, uh, Pan's Labyrinth is my favourite film of his by, by quite a long way. And mm -hmm. I really like Devil's Backbone, and I like Kronos as well, his first film. Um, yeah. However, I'm not really a fan of really any of his other films. So I didn't really like Blade 2. I don't really like the Hellboy films. Wasn't a huge fan of Pacific Rim. Thought it was a bit stupid, to be honest. And didn't really like... Uh, crimson peak that much either um i know yeah. you you we've had discussions about this and you liked it more than me yeah i like the aesthetic of crimson peak but i do admit that the plot doesn't feel very strong and that was kind of the film's weak point um i liked pan's labyrinth the most of his films before i saw this but i'm gonna um put it out there and say that this is my new favorite del toro film and i think that you will prefer this to pan's labyrinth as well when you see it wow okay so when i saw plans labyrinth i gave it 10 out of 10 it's very very rare for me to do that so that's uh that's big praise right there uh there's one particular scene in this that i think you're gonna love but we're gonna have to discuss it after you've seen it because it's too oh, much okay. of a spoiler oh, that's not good okay all right ask me about that when you've seen it ask me which scene it was yeah i'll, I'll have to <laughs> definitely definitely so you've mentioned sally hawkins now i i really like sally hawkins she's really good uh, very, mm -hmm. very good actress. I understand Michael Shannon's in this as well. I'm a big fan of his. Yes, he is, yeah. Octavia Spencer plays um, Sally Hawkins' best friend and co-worker in this film as well. Yeah, so he's got a really, really good cast together then in terms of acting-wise. That's three really, really top of the line in terms of performance actors. Um, yeah, I feel like he's just gone from strength to strength, to be honest, because this is just amazing, this film. It got such a great reception okay cool um so yeah it sounds as if it's one definitely to look forward to when it comes out next year then for anyone who hasn't seen it mm -hmm. yeah i mean it's a bit of a long wait so i do feel very privileged like i say and to see the man himself on stage was was incredible uh, but not horror at all in any way well it's not listed as horror but like i said it is dark and gory so i'm gonna put it out there and say yes <laughs> 